Hi everyone, my name is Carly. Hope all is well. Today is December the 24th, 2020 and Merry Christmas to all of you. I would love to share this important message with, uh, with all of you from the Lord. As always, test the spirit and only be anchored in the Lord and the Bible 24-7 uh, and test the spirit. I pray today's message is a blessing and also that it brings confirmation to many of you since I know the Lord is talking to so many of us in this hour prophetically. Okay, so just before I even begin, I just want to say Merry Christmas to all of you. I know it's been a very difficult year for many people nationwide and worldwide but at the same time it's been a blessing my friends because as the Lord said at this time last year uh, he said 2020 vision tell them, tell them my daughter tell them that the remnant you know has to partner with God's heart God's vision God's purposes God's agenda and if we don't uh, if we don't have our uh, if our vision does not match the Lord's you know God was going to replace us my friends you know I talked about even this time last year that the Lord was saying uh, shake rattle and roll rumble the shaking was coming and here's what it is my friends the shaking has happened in this country it has happened around the world but at the same time it's a blessing because I really believe that uh, a lot of us, our vision, our perspective, our, there's been a renewal of, of the mind uh, that the Lord has been working in all of us to seek him more, my friends. He is our rock. He is our salvation. He is our fortress. And we are supposed to only be anchored in the Lord and the word in this hour, my friends, not in people, you know. Uh, and I think that in itself, the, the, despite of all that's been happening, a lot of people's, their, their lives have changed dramatically. But I, I really believe it's a blessing. And I thank the Lord because God is perfect and God is good. You know, if you look at our, if you you look at our uh, our actions as a nation even as as, as the entire world there's been a lot of sin you know for, for, for far too long we've been mocking the Lord we've been scoffing the Lord we've been you know throwing our fists at, at the Lord and the Lord has said enough is enough and you know God is a great you know he's a good father he's a great father but he's also a righteous judge and consuming fire and the world's going to see that side of him my friends especially the church so despite of everything you know we should be thankful if you are watching this video we should praise the Lord and give him thanks uh, enough with the murmuring enough with the complaining God hates it you know I know uh, the Lord is definitely purging and pruning and he is putting his people to the fire to burn the junk off of them my friends because guess what God wants to birth revival and the church in itself has to be a holy bride okay the church right now is not a holy bride we continue to we have been continuing to be a whore of Babylon and also a spiritual adulteress in many and you know when you look at the sexual sin in the, in the body of Christ you look at the sin of unforgiveness and envy and selfish ambition the the pimping and the mocking of the Lord in the church the prostitution of the Lord in the church my friends we have to come to repent so then again, it is a blessing and let, let us ponder and, and examine our walks with the Lord. Let's humble ourselves before him and ask say, Lord, examine my heart, you know, purge the junk off of me, remove the idols out of my life. Help me to be that child of God that you have created me to be as you are preparing your people worldwide and nationwide for revival because you want a, a holy vessel and not a tainted one and that we have all fallen short of God's glory. And that's a fact. So again, as we are on the brink of Christmas, uh, let's be thankful. Let's remember what Christmas is for you know uh, it's a day that we think of our Savior but it's every day we should think of our Savior you know and the blessing of, of knowing Jesus Christ my friends and why it's important the body of Christ needs to you know preach the gospel and be the hands of feet of the Lord in this hour you know I was spending time with the Lord and you know just a few days ago we saw the Bethlehem star that has been seen all over the world it's not a coincidence my friends you know God is speaking and I really dis I discern that the Lord has allowed that to remind his people worldwide his creation that he is with us in the midst of the chaos in the midst of all this doom and gloom God is still there and and at the same time I think it was also I think the Lord was also uh, displaying that Bethlehem star to tell his adversary the devil and his minions that it is game over so without further ado I'm just going to share what the Lord's been speaking just bear with me it's a lot of beautiful uh, revelations from the Lord and as always test the spirit okay so as you know uh, it is December the 24th there's been a lot of stuff going on it's here in Georgia especially and again just to reiterate what the Lord's been saying since September our country continues to uh, experience that Exodus 14 right which is a chapter when the Hebrews left and the chariots are chasing them down but the chapter ends with Moses telling them behold for the chariots you see today you will no longer see for the Lord is going to make a way just be still and that's where we're still at my friends I also this, uh, show, shared with you what the Lord said on October the 25th that the, uh, that the tipping point was at a standstill and then the Lord said right after uh, that we are his people and he is our God and uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord's. My friends, here's the thing. So we are in week six. I believe it's been, I think it's been 50 days already. Um, 
where the election, the results of this election have been on a standstill, okay? But recently the Lord said he's, a, he's tipping the scales on the favor of his people. Why is the Lord allowing all this? Is to, once again, is to test our faith, to build our faith, and yes, also to expose. And as difficult as, as it is, my friends, this is why, once again, we have to lean on the Lord and only uh, be anchored in him and the word because, as you know, everything, you know, outside of God is wicked, Okay, and no, nothing's perfect and good, only the Lord himself. So here's what the Lord's been saying about what's been happening now and why the wait seems long. Now, remember, the Bible says that uh, to the Lord, uh, a, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Okay, so just just hear me out. So December the 8th, the Lord said the following. The reason why the wait seems so long is because the Exodus line is long and that people are being set free. And that we will not be empty handed. And the Lord gave me Exodus chapter 3 verses 19 for 22. Uh, so uh, he gave me a vision. Uh, if you ever seen the movie The Ten Commandments. Remember when the, the Hebrews are leaving. And there's that long line of people. There's some in the front. Some in the middle. Some in the back. And then some people are still leaving Egypt. That's what God was showing me in, 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 as, in prayer. That there are people that are still being set free from spiritual Egypt. What do I mean? By, what does the Lord mean by that? Rather said. Uh, you know. It's the, it's the bondage. Right? The spiritual bondage. The deception. The perversion. The corruption. People people's eyes are awakened up to the truth there is that great awakening that God is sending them free that renewal of the mind as, as, as it is in the scripture and what the Lord said recently he is deprogramming his people okay the more he unveils the more he exposes people are waking up to his truth and as the Lord said it a few months ago the more he exposes the more evident the Lord and his word becomes okay now, on that same morning, December the 8th, 2020, this is what the Lord had to say for his people. Be encouraged. Habakkuk 2, verse 3. For the vision awaits an appointed time. It testifies of the end and does not lie. Though it lingers, wait for it, since it will surely come and will not delay. Right after the Lord gave me that word for his people, okay, he said, continue to read chapters 4 through 20, okay? And this is a word for the wicked. And it is talking about God's judgment and wrath against the wicked. And what was fascinating was that when, as I read the scripture, Habakkuk 2 verses 4 through 20, everything that I read, it was confirmation of what the Lord has spoken in days and weeks prior to reading that scripture about how in the previous video, I told you how the cup of God's wrath is going to fall upon the wicked. Uh, God's going to judge the wicked. The cup of bitterness is falling upon the wicked and, and so forth and so on. So I was just, I, I was just praise the Lord because this was confirmation of what he has been speaking over the last several weeks. And then if you go back to the previous videos, it's all there. Okay. So on that same morning, December the 8th, 2020, we were praying about the Jericho March. Now, as you probably remember, the Jericho March took place on December the 12th in DC. Uh, I wish I would have gone. I wasn't able to, but I had friends that did it and I heard it was amazing. It was powerful. So as we were praying uh, four days prior to the event, this is what the Lord had to say about the Jericho March in, uh, in, in DC. Here's what the Lord said. DC is the modern day Egypt and the modern day Jericho. The Jericho March is actually a modern day Exodus. The people in the March is the modern day tribe of the Lion of Judah. And that POTUS Donald J. Trump, in addition to being Moses, he's also David, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, and yes, also Solomon. And I'll share what the Lord said about that word Solomon, which was beautiful. It was, it was such an awesome word. And that the Lord was saying that this uh, Jericho march that took place in D.C., how they were walking around the Capitol and the court, etc. God was saying that this was God's way to rebuke the wicked pharaohs. All these Luciferians of the New World Order, that was God's way to rebuke them. And God was saying, let my people go. Now, December the 11th, 2020, we're still praying for the Jericho March, right? And this is what the Lord had to say. So one of the things that I noticed is that this march was on December the 12th. And I said, Lord, what is the story with the number 12? I mean, I don't know. There's some, I feel like there's something prophetic associated with that. And the Lord had this to say that 12 represents the 12 tribes of Israel. That Jericho March, the Lord said, is they, those people represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, you know, the, the spiritually speaking. I also heard the word roar. The Lord also said that is like the new Jerusalem, the pound, the pavement. Okay, and then the Lord said that the Lion of Judah was going before those people at that Jericho march, and it was a beautiful word. Now, fast forward on the 15th of December. Okay. I don't know if you paid attention, but Joe Biden happened to uh, come to Atlanta. He was visiting Atlanta because he was campaigning for those two senatorial candidates, uh, Ossoff and Warnock. OK, and as we know, they're Luciferian leftists and, you know, they're not of the Lord. But we pray for them. Anywho, so I was in prayer that day. Uh, the Lord gave me this message about him. He, he said this about President. I'm sorry. He said this about Joe Biden, vice, former Vice President Joe Biden. He said this. 
they're crowning their king, they're crowning their king, they're crowning their king like Adonijah, okay? And the Lord said, let them boast among themselves before humiliation and pride take place. And the Lord gave me Psalms uh, 68 verse 1, and he had me read 1 uh, Kings chapters 1, 1 to 53. So really quickly, for those that do not know who Adonijah is or was, Adonijah it was the brother of Solomon. Now, as you know, the Lord always has his way. It's when, when, it, when the Lord, his will is always going to get done. So in the case of David, God chose David to be king. And the one that followed after David, God chose Solomon. Okay. Adonijah oh, and, and even Absalom, they were threats against David because they wanted to, they wanted to take the crown. Okay. But the thing is they were never part of God's plan. So in the meantime, Adonijah, he grabbed the people in the town. He, he grabbed the fake priest. Okay, which is the false prophets of today, you know, all those fake pastors and all those fake Christians that are endorsing Biden, very similarly, back then, like Adonijah, he grabbed the fake prophets, the fake priests, you know, the fake people endorsing Adonijah, 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 but here's what happened, in the end, the true prophet Nathan went to Bathsheba, was, which was David's wife, and he told them what was taking place with Adonijah, and immediately they, they, uh, they, David found out what was going on, and then they crowned Solomon because Solomon was the will and the purpose of the Lord, okay? So even though Adonijah did not respect the will of God, it didn't matter because God still had his way, and that's what God was saying, that uh, Biden is... Adonijah and it's also he's also King Saul and that's what God said back in the summer when I did this trip uh, throughout the Bible Belt and the 13 colonies and I and I said this earlier uh, a few months ago I said it how like when I went to Delaware God said he chose I'm sorry, he chose President Trump as David. And the Lord said, just like I rejected Saul as king, I rejected Biden as king. If I'm about to reappoint and reanoint President Trump, my David, to a second term, and it will be in his second term, says the Lord, I will use him to topple down the Goliath of our time, which is the New World Order. This is what the Lord spoke back in August, and I released that word back then. So again, God is just saying, like, let them boast among themselves. Let them celebrate. Let them think that they're being crowned. Guess what? God didn't crown them, Okay. God's going to have his way. And the Lord said this about President Trump. In addition to David and Nehemiah, Moses and Jeremiah, the Lord said, yes, I have even chosen him like Solomon. For the Lord says, I've chosen him like Solomon to build the temple. And that temple is the body of Christ. Okay, it was a powerful word. And then days later, the Lord said, I found him worthy. Even when the world didn't find him worthy, even when the church didn't find him worthy, the Lord says, I found him worthy. And he is chosen like Solomon. Now, this also coincides with what the Lord said back in March, March the 10th and 20th of this year. I released that word that the Lord said that President Trump is chosen and, and he's being used like a wall to defend the body of Christ. Okay. And he was going head to head against all these demons uh, of the new world order. Okay. And that the Lord said that how the Christians were going to vote was going to depend on the eradication or the restoration of Christianity. Okay. So again, President Trump also has that Solomon mantle. And he gave me the scripture. Uh, he said, First Corinthians chapter six, verses 19 through 20 and first Corinthians chapter three, verse 17. Okay. And the, the Lord, once again, the Lord said, Trump is a Solomon called to build the temple of the Lord, also known as the body of Christ for these end times church. The body of Christ is us. And God was emphatically, he was very adamant and emphasizing the following. We need to repent and that these temples are our bodies. Okay. Sorry. These bodies are the temples of the living God. And we have to honor the Lord in spirit and truth. And we need to be consecrated. We need to walk in the spirit, not the flesh, and we need to be holy, okay? God was very, very firm about that. So here's what the Lord is saying. So December the 15th, I'm going to continue uh, in, in just com conversing with the Lord. The Lord said the following, connect with people, but do not attach yourself to them. Only attach yourself to the Lord, for he is the vine and we are the branches. And he gave me John 15, verse 15. That's uh, that same morning. The Lord also said this, uh, just to encourage the, the, his, his people, okay? Those that are standing in the gap, those that are holding the line. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? And he reminded me of that scripture, Genesis 18, verse 14, Matthew 19, verse 26, and Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? On December the 11th, in prayer. Here are some warnings that the Lord is telling everyone to repent, and that includes believers and non-believers, the wicked inside and outside the church. The Lord said this, if you sold your soul to Satan for 30 pieces of silver, now is the time to repent. He gave me Matthew 16, verse 26, and Revelation 3, verse 17. That same morning, December the 11th, 2020, 
This is a message for the church. The Lord said, many chose to follow their own desires. Repent before you're given over to a reprobate mind. And he gave me the book of Romans chapters 1, verses 28 through 32. Now, on December the 14th, actually December the 17th, this is what the Lord said. If there's something in your life that you need to repent, the hour has come. Again, the Lord is emphasizing repentance, my friends. And this is just, it coincides with what he said over the last several weeks. And I released in the last video, the cup of God's wrath and judgment is going to fall upon the wicked. Okay. So repent. Now I want to share, um, what the Lord was telling me, uh, on in midnight prayer, 12, 14, 2020. If you're probably wondering what's happening now in the heavenly realm, as we know, spiritual warfare, you know, uh, we don't, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness, right? Well, and, and the Lord was saying that in the heavenly realm, there is a clashing of kingdoms, the clashing of Christ versus the kingdom of antichrist. It's the, it's the, it's the spirit of the Lord Jesus versus the spirit of Satan, the antichrist spirit. Okay. So that's the clashing of kingdoms. But the Lord said, I am wrecking the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. Okay. I also want to release this word from the Lord that it's, I think it's going to bring encouragement to the to the children of the Lord. The promise is what the Lord said. The, pro, the promised uh, children of the Lord. These are people that have, these are the God-fearing, Bible literate, prophetic, discerning Christians. They love the Lord. They chase after God. They have laid out their lives for God. These are people that are warriors. These are people that, you know, have sacrificed everything. Obedient, holy, God-fearing. These people, the Esthers, the Deborahs, the Isaacs, the Daniels, the Josephs, they're part of the promise because what's conceived in the spirit, says the Lord, it will birth. And what's conceived in the flesh will not birth, says the Lord. And that's why the Ishmaels have got to go. And the true children of the Lord, the Lord says this, prominence, prominence. And he gave me Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9, which talks about, you know, how, that the Lord will, will purify us in the fire to come out like silver and gold. And then he gave me the scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verses 12 to 17, talking about do not forget the Lord. Okay. And that word is very serious, my friends, because as you know, God is not a respecter of persons and we have to walk with absolute humility and absolute reverence and fear the Lord. If we get cocky, if we be, if we forget the Lord, you know, God will put us back in the wilderness and, and he's not playing around. So that is a very strong warning for the body of Christ. Even those that are obedient, remember, remember God is not a respecter of persons. Okay. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share with you all is the following. So God has been also warning. He's been sharing some messages that we need to be mindful because we are living in end times. Okay. And, and why it's important to keep this in mind. The Lord said to the church, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He also reminded, and he gave me Hebrews 12, 14 and Philippians 2, 12, work out your salvation with fear and trembling because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Matthew 24, verse 13, he who endures to the end shall be saved. The Lord also talked about the wicked. He said, he gave me that scripture. The Lord has made everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of disaster. Okay. The Lord also said to remind his church, some people, including some Christians, they trust in chariots. But the true Christian, we will trust in the Lord. No matter what is happening, we will hold on to God's report, my friends. And we will not be misled by, by our feelings, our emotions, our perceptions in the natural eye. But we will walk in the spirit and not, by, not in the flesh. We will walk by faith and not by sight. The Lord also is telling the church, choose this day whom you will serve, says the Lord. Okay, he's very adamant about that, my friends, because a lot of people are still, you know, worshiping uh, mammon. They're worshiping the things of this world. And God's saying, uh-uh, this is the time. You either worship Jesus or you worship Satan. And this applies to both believer and non-believer. Choose this day. There is no more middle ground. There is no more riding on the fence. The hour has come. You have to make a decision, folks. Believer or non-believer. You choose team Jesus or you choose team Satan. Pick one and stay there. The Lord also said to the church, Whoever denies his name in front of others, the Lord is going to deny you in front of the Father. Okay? Now, I wanted to share what the Lord's been speaking the last couple of days, okay? Which is very powerful and I'm very encouraged and I, and I, and I, I really believe it's going to encourage you, okay? Now, um, okay, so December the 23rd, which is yesterday, this is what the Lord said. There was two messages. The part one is this. He said to the church, Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, and he'll make your crooked path straight. Proverbs 3, verse 6. Then the Lord said, part 2, that the giants are about to fall. And remember that the Joshua generation had to fight 
before possessing the land. Okay, so you see us, we're holding the line, standing in the gap, we're trying to, you know, uh, hold on to God's promises. We are the Joshua generation, my friends, in the spiritual sense, as we pray, as we continue to intercede for our president, continue to intercede for America, and, and, and allow the Lord to lead the way. The Lord is saying those giants are about to fall, okay? And that the, the reason why God is allowing all this weight, okay, 50 days after the election, why? Because the Lord says he's allowing all this to test and to build our faith, my friends. And to remember that without God, we're nothing, okay? Just like the Hebrews, Jesus made the way in that Red Sea. And God brought them to the promised land. Okay, so this is what, because at the end of the day, it's about God's glory and not about us, my friends. God's going to have the last laugh and the last word and the last say. You better believe it in the name of Jesus. Now, here's what the Lord had to say this morning, okay, which was so beautiful. Uh, the Lord said, just like I intercepted Satan's plans in the days of Herod, I will intercept the devil's plans again. The spiritual birthing, this is about God's birthing, his plans of a new Jerusalem, in other words, the revival. Okay, it was a powerful word. I am so encouraged, my friends. Listen, I again, I'm going to leave you with this. I know things have been crazy. I know that uh, there's been a lot of chaos. But those that are truly anchored in the Lord and in the word of God, we have not been moved, my friends. Again, do you see my face stressed out? Not one bit. Okay, you're going to discern who are the warriors, who are the lukewarm, who are the cold. God is sifting the sheep versus the, the, the goats and the wheat versus the tares. It is what it is. Even among the body of Christ, God is exposing who are the lions, who are the eagles, you know, who are the sheep, my friends, you know, who are the people that really love the Lord and are consecrated to him, my friends, versus the ones who are you know, walking in, in a double mind. There are a lot of Christians that are, are walking in fear. Fear is not of the Lord. We have the victory, my friends. It's time. Put away the CDs and the DVDs and the Christian books of people and get in the face of Jesus Christ, my friends. You know, spend time with him. Consecrate, repent. Ask the Lord to have his way in your life and read the Bible so you know the author and the finisher of your faith and that you, you study yourself approved. Okay, listen, God is going to birth his revival. Uh, you know, uh, I am confident. I, I, I trust the Lord because my God is bigger. Okay, and I just want to leave you with this. The Lord has spoken. Yes, President Trump will have his second term. Okay, in the name of Jesus. He is that David, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Moses. And yes, that's Solomon, my friends. And the glory all belongs to the Lord. And we give him praise and we give him thanks, my friends. You know, America is a country that has, you know, we have our Judeo-Christian principles. And it is time that we take back every industry and, and give it to Christ. Because, my friends, it is our time, as the Lord has spoken. It is time for the righteous to rule and reign. It is time for the wicked to weep and mourn and the righteous to laugh and dance. The Lord has been saying he wants to flick off the filth, bulldoze this way. He's going to steamroll and destroy the darkness in the name of Jesus. That the Lord says everything done in secret will come to the light. That it is time for the wicked to squeal, for the pigs that they are, unravel, disclose, reveal, and expose, says the Lord. That the CDC, lamentations is coming to the CDC in the name of Jesus. Lord, the Lord said that even the, 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 the Luciferian cabal, this whole virus, I released that word back in February of this year, this warning. When Pelosi wore that pin, and I'll say it again, the Lord said that's the Caldacea symbol. And I said, Lord, that looks like the medical symbol. The Lord said that is the Caldacea symbol where Satan is speaking code, daughter. That, that symbol stems all the way from the Babylonian pagan era. And the Lord had this warning. Pray for the president, daughter, for the Luciferian cabal in Congress wants to do an Ides of March attempt against the president. Pray for his protection. And then the second thing he said is, in God's timing, he is going to pull the rug underneath the feet of the wicked. It's coming. Part one came to pass. Now we have to wait for part two to come to pass in the name of Jesus because God is faithful. God's word does not return void. Of course, discerning it's from him. I want you to know something to, to encourage you. When you spend time with God, the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and you read the word, his word nourishes your soul. He, he gives you strength. He is the living bread, the living water, my friends. Okay. And I'm here to tell you, I don't give a flip about the new world order and Fauci and Pelosi and all these wicked Luciferian pedos. I could care less. You know why? Because God is bigger. God is greater. 
God is on the throne and he is going to bring judgment against them. Just like the Lord spoke it back in January and February. The writing is on the wall. Their days are numbered. We are about to see God's hand move. That as the Lord spoke back in April, there's going to be a global pandemic of the fear of the Lord. The days of putting Jesus as this fuzzy wuzzy God, you know, tickle my ears and, and he's going to accept everything. That is a lie. I'm here to remind the believer and, and the non-believer alike. The Lord is coming. His spirit is going to fall upon this earth where people are going to get, are going to be set free. They're going to have a renewal of the mind. They're going to hunger and thirst for the things of Christ. That's what the Lord spoke of five years ago. Okay. That people are going to get tired of the world's ways. And there's a wave coming of kingdom ways, my friends. Because you know what? At the end of the day, the earth is God's footstool and heaven is his throne. And God will do what he wants and what he please. And he will bring his people to his knees for his glory. He asks for no one's permission. He will do what he wants, my friends. And the church and the non-believing world better get ready for the hand of God to move mightily for his glory. He's about to purge all the junk, all the filth, all the wickedness off this earth in the name of, in the name of Christ. And he's going to have his way. And no witch and no warlock and no devil from hell, no Luciferian Soros, no demonic agent from hell, no Pelosi, none of these demons. They have no say in the matter in the name of Christ because they're not bigger than my God. So we pray for them that they repent because as the Lord spoke it just a few weeks ago, the cup of wrath and bitterness that they try to bring against God's people, against God's creation, it's going to backfire and it's going to fall on them. Bill Gates will be exposed. God's going to hack him. And everything that's dark and demonic and secret, God's going to expose and it's their time to weep and mourn. And when that happens, we will not boast. We will not delight in the suffering of our enemies. But we will praise and we will thank God for the justice and the liberty he is about to pour on this earth, my friends. And as the Lord spoke it, tell them, daughter, when justice falls upon the wicked, it's going to be a jubilee for the people. For America is the birthing room and the birthing place for God's plans to manifest here on earth in the name of Christ. And no one can, over, can come against that. No one. They can summon all the hell they want. You know, they can do whatever they want. It's going to fall to the ground. Because Jesus Christ is on the throne. So get ready. So I bless you. I pray today's message has encouraged you. This is the hour to seek the Lord. Seek him while he may be found, my friends. And I bless you. I pray that this that these holidays are, if you're, if you're with your family, praise the Lord. If you're not, you're not alone. God is with you. I pray blessings over in the name of Christ. You have a purpose. You have a kingdom destiny, a kingdom purpose for the glory of the Lord. There's a kingdom assignment that God wants to do for you and your family, whether it's your spouse, your children, your grandchildren. This is not the hour to quit. This is not the hour to retreat. The righteous take it by force, my friends. Greater is he who is in Christ than he in the world. Okay? If you have to cry it out as you cross over to your promised land, let it be. But you will not quit. There is a testimony. There is a purpose that the Lord has to birth through you. And you will birth it in the name of Jesus. You will push and push until it manifests in the name of Christ by being holy, by being pure, by being anchored in the word and anchored in the Lord. And God will encourage you and motivate you and get you to push and birth the purposes that he has for your life. You understand me? We're not here by accident. We're not here by a mistake. We are here to serve Jesus Christ and to bring souls onto him. Okay. For his glory. Okay. I speak blessings in the name of Jesus over you. I pray that God's perfect will and perfect plans for your life manifest here on earth. And just be encouraged. 2021, I look forward to it. I'm excited for it because God's going to move on our behalf in the name of Jesus. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I know he's going to move. That because our God, Jesus Christ, he is faithful. Alrighty. So be optimistic. Fear is not of the Lord. God has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Remember that. Okay. I love you. I hope you have a blessed Christmas, okay, with your family, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you all.